Today on Daily Renewal, we're not only going to discuss how to find a good church, but also how to determine whether the church we're going to is healthy or not. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of not only finding a good church, but how to do that. You know, there's a lot of people today that maybe have had bad experiences in church, or for whatever reason you find yourself outside of church, and you want to find a good, healthy church. And and a healthy church will play a major role in you growing spiritually. But also, I, I think that it's very important that for a lot of people, you should be willing to look at some of these things, And really, when you look at the church maybe that you're attending, if some of these things aren't in place, you need to know that uh, maybe the place that you're attending isn't as healthy as it should be, and it may be time for a change. So the first things that I'm going to deal with are some things that I believe if you're going to go to a healthy church, these are uh, six things in particular that should be balanced out, and, and these are absolutes if you're looking for a church. And then I'm going to share near the end of the video some things that are probably warning signs that if these are focuses or emphasis uh, in, in some churches, you'd really need to be careful about. I'm Pastor Lyle, and welcome to Daily Renewal. If this is your first time tuning in with us, I just want to ask you to consider becoming a subscriber to our channel. And also, if you're getting benefit from our content, please like and share this video with anybody that you think that it will help. Well, the past couple uh, sessions of Daily Renewal, we've gone through the idea of, uh, you know, uh, do I need to go to church? We cover that. And then our last episode, uh, we talked about, you know, there's times where people can't go to church. Sometimes there's jobs that keep us away from church. And, uh, but, you know, so there's, you know, how do you function and, and uh, move ahead spiritually if you don't have a local church? It's possible. Uh, but, but this video today, this in particular, is uh, finding a place that is healthy. And make no mistake about it, my friend, that if you are going to have a vibrant walk with God, you need to have a healthy community or a healthy church and be a part of it. And so we're going to look very quickly at some things today. At some, uh, we're gonna, as I mentioned, six things in particular that are that it, these need to be really important things if you're going to look for a church. And then again, near the end, there's some things that if these if these other things are an emphasis, then you need to be real careful. The first thing that I want to talk about, and and it's one of the most important things when you're looking for a local church, is uh, the preaching. And and the reason why the preaching is important in a local church is because the preaching will dictate what the church actually believes. Now, when I say the preaching, I'm just going to stop right there and say this. One of the first things that you should do when you go into a church, when you're looking for a church, is you need to know what that church believes. And, you know, for some, maybe you've been to church before, you might have a real good understanding about what you're looking for. You know, there is different styles of church. There's different uh, churches. There's different emphasis. But uh, there's some real core things that if you're going to go to a Bible-believing church that is really going to, that God can use to bring transformation to your life, there's some core things that uh, that really need to be a part of 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 a local church. You know, and uh, you know, in the in our church, we had uh, what we'd call our statement of faith. Now, in the statement of faith, uh, and that's a lot of churches would would have what they call a statement of faith. They might call it a little something different, but but the statement of faith is very important. You need to make sure of things. For example, you know, what do they believe about Jesus? Do they believe that Jesus is the only way, as the Bible teaches? Uh, do they believe that the Bible is inerrant? There's a lot of churches today that say, well, we believe the Bible, but we believe that there's other writings that are just as important or other revelations. Uh, you know, believing that the Bible is God's word manifest uh, or, or the inerrant word of God is very important. The Bible has to be our go-to when uh, whenever we uh, look to God. Uh, another one. Belief on the Trinity. There's a lot of churches that say, well, I believe in maybe one person of the Trinity. When I say the Trinity, if you're new, the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's God in three persons. 
Uh, we could explain that, but that would take another video to do that, and so that's another video on another day. But belief in the Trinity is a core principle, or a core of uh, Christian doctrine. Uh, the belief in a literal hell, in a literal heaven, is very important. There's a lot of people today that say, well, no, those, are, those places don't really exist. Friend, the Bible makes it very clear that those places exist. Uh, the other, another one, uh, the idea of salvation, the fact that, uh, that Jesus came so that we would be saved, and it's only when we believe on him that we are saved. There's some churches today that would say, well, we're all saved anyway, or they have some real weird ideas about those things. So I would encourage you, find out what the church believes, and you can find out usually on a website or, or at the church, what is their statement of faith, and those things need to line up with the Bible. Now, again, back to the idea of preaching. Uh, the preaching should, in most churches, it should line up with their statement of faith. That isn't always the case, and if it isn't, you probably need to uh, reevaluate going there. Uh, but some of the other things, you know, the preaching today, uh, a lot of people, you know, they tend to f look for a church that preaches uh, messages that they like or, you know, different things that are kind of along the lines of what they think. I'm going to tell you, friend, that the that a real vibrant or a, a church that you should be looking for is a church that preaches the Bible. And when the Bible is preached, it should challenge you. And let me be more specific. It should challenge you about the way you live. It should challenge you about the way you think. Because none of us is, uh, is at that point where we're at the end of that transformation experience. I'll say that a different way. All of us are a real piece of work that's still being worked on by God. And, you know, so when we look at the preaching, you know, we, we have to understand that when the, the Word of God is preached, when Jesus spoke to people, it cut them to the heart and made them want to change. And then from there, you know, th then we take steps and, you know, probably go through this. Then there's steps that we take by making decisions to allow God to come into our lives and continually bring transformation to our lives. And that's something that will happen from the first day to our last breath if we're doing this properly. So the preaching from behind the pulpit or the preaching from the platform of the church should be preaching that challenges us. And then uh, another just added note about, uh, about the preaching. You know, in today's day and age, there's a lot of uh, what we would call celebrity pastors or celebrity preachers. There's a lot of people that are very good orators or very good speakers. And, you know, the, the thing about that that's kind of tough is if you're really going to be uh, in, uh, in a place that's going to help you, it's important that you know a little bit about uh, the, the people that are doing the preaching. Now, the first time you go into a church, you're not going to know much about the, the preacher. But that's the benefit of being a part of a local church and, and the opposite of what happens when you're just kind of like watching somebody on YouTube or, or uh, you know, from a, on TV. You know, the people in a local church, you have an opportunity to observe them. You have an opportunity to see what their lives are like outside of the church, uh, potentially. And, and the reason why that's important is because, and you can get this sometimes through the preaching, uh, but I would say this, finding out the lifestyle, is the preacher humble? Is he somebody that uh, has integrity? Uh, it's very important that we uh, seek out people that we can see the transparency of their lives. We want to know if, if what they're actually preaching is, is actually working in their own lives. And that's really hard to observe when, uh, you know, either in big churches or, you know, TV ministries, it's really hard to see the lives of the people that are doing the speaking. And if at all possible, you want to know that the people who are guiding you, that are directing you, are actually living out the very life that they are, um, th that they're telling you that you should live. Now, uh, I could go a little deeper in those things, but that's the basic. You want to know what, what the church believes. Now, the second one that I want to talk about today, and some people might not think this is a big deal, but I'm going to tell you that it is, and I'm going to try to explain a little bit why. You need to find a place that has a vibrant spiritual community. Uh, and, and it goes a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more than just being friendly, but I can tell you that being friendly is one of the litmus tests that I would look at. And again, I'll explain this. 
You know, I know some churches that are very friendly, and yet doctrinally and in some of these other issues, they don't they, they don't even come close to being right. That's why I'm saying the first ones that I'm mentioning here, there has to be a balance of these things. Uh, you know, so a, a vibrant spiritual community. Now, here's what you look for, or what I look for as far as a vibrant spiritual a vibrant spiritual community. You know, you need to find out: Do the people there actually have a walk with God? You know, there's many churches we can go to where there's lots of people, but you can tell what somebody's focus is by what they talk about. And there's nothing better, nothing that, it, well, <laughs> there's almost nothing more exciting than if you're trying to grow in your walk with God, if you're around other people that are trying to do that as well. It, it, it helps us. It encourages us. And this is one of the main functions of the church is to encourage one another, to exhort one another, to be there, to be an iron sharpens iron type friend or person within a, a community. And so it's very important when you, when you do look for another ch uh, a local church, you know, is it friendly? You know, I've been to many local churches where, uh, honestly, I've been there. I sat down, listened to a message, and probably stayed for 10 minutes after, and not one person even approached and said hi. Uh, that's usually a bad sign. You know, and again, you can have an overly friendly church that's kind of mechanical and they're taught to do that. That's not good either. But if you're in a place where they really don't care, especially if you're a new person, they don't, it's kind of like you don't exist. That's usually an indication that something isn't quite right in, in, in some areas. You know, you want to find a place where there's people, ultimately, that have biblical fruit in their life. And, you know, when I look at that in conversations that I have with people, biblical fruit, I talk a lot about that, about this on Daily Renewal. It's listed in Galatians. Uh, do, pe do the people have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Now, you can't find all of those out and in in going to a church once, maybe not even three times, uh, but some of them you can a legitimate love for people. And I, I know even as a pastor, but even as just as uh, uh, take the pastor part away from it, you know, when you go into a church and, and people, uh, they're happy you're there, you know, usually it's because they have a love for God and as a result, they have a love for people. And so it's very important that you find a place that has a vibrant community, a community that has joyful people in it and, and, and uh, you know, the way to look for this, or one of the key components is, is looking at some of the conversations. Do they have conversations? Is it, is it obvious that there's people there that have a relationship with God? And again, look back to, to the book of Galatians uh, to see some of those things. But some of it is seen by just how they treat other people. Now, the next one, praise and worship. This is a controversial topic in a lot of places. Now, I come from a line of churches where praise and worship is really important. Uh, you know, as far as it's one of the main ways to communicate with God. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, pull this back a little bit and under and help us understand that really what I'm saying is a church that has a connection with God. Now, praise and worship is could even be looked at as a form of prayer, as connection. So, does the church pray? This is important. Uh, when it comes to to uh, to praise and worship, there's all different styles. There's all dif different types of praise, worship, you know, songs that are done in church. But I want to make this real simple because of all the different styles. Even though I've come from churches that are very expressive in their praise and worship, I want to tell you this, that uh, I've also been to churches that are very expressive, and yet they didn't have balance with any of these other things. And as a result... It created a problem later on. Uh, you can go to a church that has, and I'll talk a little bit about this later, but you can go to a church that has the best music uh, that you can find, and that, my friend, is not good enough. In fact, some of the best music is, is or what we, or what some people would say is the best, most polished music, can actually be t uh, a real problem. And I'll tell you why. It's very important when we look at praise and worship at, at, in a church, we can't get stuck on style. If we're going to get stuck on anything, we have to understand 
that the worship needs to be biblical. And friend, there is a lot of songs by a lot of the greatest names in praise and worship. A lot of the songs, if you really look at them biblically, that don't pass the litmus test uh, for being biblical songs. You know, we used to joke that there were certain church movements said people said, well, you know, you can sing that song to your wife. You know, you know that song that Jesus doesn't even mention. I mean, it, it has no substance. Friend, be very careful if you're going to a church that, that has a very big emphasis on, song, on, on the music and they don't have biblical lyrics in the songs. Uh, you know, and, and when I say biblical lyrics, these lyrics also, the way you can tell if they are biblical, they should be glorifying God. Many or many of the songs, much of the music in church today, if you analyze it, the key component you have to look at is, am I singing the songs just to feel good? Am I singing the songs that are about me? Or are these songs glorifying God? And again, with all the different styles of music, uh, you know, we need to be very pinpoint accurate on on this particular point because there's so much, uh, so many things that are so many songs and different movements and stuff that are uh, creating a problem. I'll talk with more uh, more about that later. But don't be hooked up on the style. M be very focused on are the songs biblical and are they glorifying God, which should both be one and the same. Now, the next one today, again, in balance. So we've gone over four of these. We've gone over the, the preaching or what the church believes. We've gone over a vibrant spiritual community. We've gone over praise and worship. Actually, the fourth one is this one, discipleship. Now, what do I mean by discipleship? You know, a lot of, a lot of churches may have different terms for what I call discipleship. But I'm going to say this. You want to look for a church that has a Bible study or some form of mentoring or teaching. This is really important, friend. Uh, you know, the idea of studying the Bible. Often, you know, on a regular church service, you don't have an opportunity to ask questions. And, 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 and not only that, but it gives you an opportunity through a Bible study or discipleship to go a little deeper into some of the teaching of the Bible. And not only that, I'll just add this as well. You know, when, when, uh, when you look at the New Testament, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, we want to be a New Testament church. Well, understand this. Culturally, they met... Uh, you know, every day, probably multiple times a day at some points, you know, the culture dictated that they could do that or it allowed them to be able to do that. And our culture, it's a little tougher to do. So the more often that we can get together with people and, and talk about the things of God and study the Bible, the better. Uh, but, but, you know, for a lot of churches, the way that we do this is we have a discipleship or a Bible study or some form of extra teaching that allows us to go a little bit deeper. And, and I will say this, that, you know, after being a pastor for many years, uh, I've been to a lot of different churches. And if you want to find a healthy church, you can usually see, a, you get a little bit better idea of the health of a church, not by how many people there are, are there on a Sunday, but how many people actually come to some of the deeper teaching, to some of the, you know, a Bible study or a discipleship. This is usually a, a, a greater indication of people that are serious about God. And that doesn't mean that you have, you know, that only way you can be serious if you go to one of these groups. But often this is one of the litmus tests that I look at as far as the true health of a church. So again, uh, that was for them. The fifth one today, missions. Now, what does missions mean? Uh, you want to, if you're looking for a church, you want to know, do these people, whether afar, you know, missions we often look at as missions being, uh, are they helping somebody in a foreign country and spreading the gospel? Missions is simply this. What is the church doing to spread the message of the gospel? And friend, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people, uh, you know, we can get caught into bringing people to church and sometimes all we're doing is bringing other Christians to church, you know, or we're bringing people because we, you know, unfortunately, we're bringing other Christians, maybe they have gone to other churches, whatever. That's, you know, those things happen. But the true litmus test of what we call missions is bringing the gospel to the world that, that maybe has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that can be a long-term uh, long missions or a, you know, a place far away. Is the church doing anything to support missionaries? Yes, but I will say this as well. What is the church doing within the community 
to uh, shed li the light of the gospel to their community. Uh, this is really important. And then that brings me to the last one as far as things that need to be a balance. Again, all these things, these are actually, these things I'm talking about, every, if you're going to find a healthy church, they need to have these things. And the last one is an, a place where it's an, uh, there's opportunity for you to be able to serve. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more uh, in the next part of the message because that can get out of line as well. But see, for all of us, we God has given all of us a gifting and a calling. And you want to find a place that even if you're not moving into that gifting and calling right away, a place where they're okay with people, you know, helping with things. You know, because one of the primary things that we should be doing as a Christian is serving in the name of Jesus. So uh, this is very important. Now, as I mentioned multiple times, but I want to really hammer this home, these things right here are absolutes that, you know, if you're looking for a healthy church, and remember, if you're in a healthy church, you will be healthy. And the other side of that is, is if you're in a church that doesn't have these things in balance, then you're probably in a place, friend, where you're not going to be as healthy as you could be. And unfortunately, there's many places, I would say a majority, easily, that don't have these in balance. And in fact, go a different direction where there's some other things that are out of balance. And I'm going to tell you that if you're in a church that's got some of these things out of balance, you really need to pray about finding a place that has these uh, these six things that I just mentioned in balance for you to be able to flourish uh, to the greatest degree spiritually. So let's take a look at some of these things. Um, these are, Again, these are things that if you find that there's too much of an emphasis on this and there's not a balance of the, of the ones that I just mentioned, this is a potential problem. Here's some of the things that I've seen. Uh, first of all, when you're looking for a church, don't just look for the biggest church in town. Uh, you'll often people say, well, you know what? If, if there's a lot of people going there, then it must be a good church. That is not always the case. It can be the case, but it isn't always the case, friend. In fact, a lot of times, uh, churches that have a lot of people go to them, There's a lot. the reason why a lot of people go, unfortunately, is because of things like my first point. They really aren't being challenged uh, with, with what they believe. Friend, we should always be in a place where we are being challenged in what we believe. And what I mean by that is uh, that a place where when the word of God is being spoken, I, you know, the Holy Spirit is challenging me in my own life to make changes. And a lot of churches today, is a lot of the larger churches, not all of them, but a lot of them have often made compromises just to get people in the door. And, and you'll see that this is a list of compromises that I'm about to talk to you about. So just because it's the biggest church in town, that is, don't look for that because often it doesn't mean that it's the healthiest church in town. Now, here's one of the compromises that a lot of people make when they're looking for a church. They're looking for a church that has all of the amazing programs that are going to benefit me. Well, friend, some of the programs, and I'm not against churches with programs. I ran a youth ministry, which would be considered a program for many years, and, it, and God used it to impact you know, probably thousands of kids, hundreds at least. So I'm not against programs, but I'm going to say this. If we are looking for a church and, and the programs are what we're looking for first, then we're already in a, in a bad place. There's many churches that have unfortunately compromised to the point where that is the lure to get people in, is I'm going to have a great program so that I can get people to come in. So we have all these programs. We have the kids' ministry, the women's ministry, the men's ministry, the fishing derby ministry, and, and we create all of these different ways just to get people to come to church. And yet, and, and again, I'll say this, Nothing wrong with a program as long as the first six things that we talked about earlier are all the focus of what we're doing as a church. But often, you'll notice if you go to a church that the focus is, it's almost like the focus is more on the program, more on the things that we do than it is the things that we should be focused on that we've already talked about earlier in this video. So, you know, just because a church has a bunch of programs and the programs that you think that you want, you know, I've heard one, for example, a kid's program is one of the most important programs. But I can honestly say this, 
that I would rather, if I had small kids, I would rather go to a church without a kids program and have them sit in a service and let them color or do whatever. I've heard multiple stories of kids that have grown up in church that remembered things that were said from behind the pulpit when it looked like they weren't even paying attention or too young to understand it. I would rather have that than put my kid in, uh, my child in a program where it's just a babysitting club or something that could be even detrimental, even though it looks spiritual, but they're going to learn things that are not even biblical, which unfortunately can happen in a lot of kids' programs. You know, so, so understand, programs, they can be real important, but if they're the focus, you need to be careful. Now, the next one. Again, I mentioned the music. Very important to understand. There's many people that make a decision on what church they go to based on the music or the worship team that they see on a Sunday. Again, friend, I've seen many places that have that have absolutely polished music that the worship team and multiple worship teams. And in fact, you know, this is often one of the, the things that if you're a musician, you know, you're, you're very susceptible to being pulled into one of these types of churches. But I can say this, the problem with a lot of these things is uh, I've seen, for example, whether it's pastoral or whether it's a music leader, we want to know the integrity of the people that are involved. And over the years, we've seen many people, many Christian worship songs that later on we find out that the leaders had real problems with integrity or they were involved in, in things they shouldn't be involved with, new age practices, all these things. You're not be able to search all of that out right now, but that's why it's very important that when I talk about, or when I'm talking here about the idea of praise and worship being biblical and glorifying God, often you can weed out uh, some of these churches just by looking at the music and what they do. Uh, so it's very important. Don't just go to a church because you like the music and it makes you feel good. You know, ultimately, praise and worship, if done properly uh, from, from uh, the platform, but also if, if it's uh, helping us engage with God properly, it does play a major role in bringing transformation to our lives. Because as I mentioned, it should be a form of prayer or communication or connecting with God. Uh, so be very careful about, about just uh, looking at the music. Again, if the other six are in balance and the music is good and biblical, then, th then that's a good thing. But if it's the focus and the other five don't, or other six don't line up, then you need to be very careful. So let's look at another one. Uh, manifestations. Now, what are manifestations? Some people, you might know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you're new, you know, there's manifestations that are talked about in the Bible. Uh, it's talked about, uh, you know, uh, the casting out demons and, and uh, healing and prophecy and all of these different, you know, spiritual gifts and things. Some people don't believe those are for today. I personally believe that they are. But I will say this, there's very stern warnings in the last days, and I'm paraphrasing, that people will follow after different, uh, different movements, different manifestations, you know, different things that claim to be Jesus. And we're living in a time right now where, I'll give you an example. Uh, I have no problem somebody praying for healing. But uh, I know people that will travel all over the country or all over the world just to get near a healing evangelist so that, that he can pray for them and they'd be healed. Well, there's multiple problems with that. You know, number one, it's the same Holy Spirit that heals. Uh, you know, and, and you don't have to follow a person. That's a part of the problem in the first place. Uh, but not only that, you know, the idea of, you know, we should be seeking Jesus, you know, there's a lot of a lot of times where we can get very off track and, or or um, off focus from what's really important. And understand that for us, we need to be seeking Jesus. And if you do need healing for something, if you're not careful, you can spend more time seeking after a healing or a manifestation than we do seeking Jesus. I've seen many people get off track due to following manifestations or looking at manifestations as being a litmus test that God is actually there. Well, the problem with that is there's also talk about in the last days that there will be false signs and wonders. 
So if you're in a church that is heavy upon manifestations, again, if they are not balanced in the first six things that we talked about and there's a heavy emphasis on manifestations, I can almost guarantee you that there is, that, that is not a healthy place. You need to be very careful. There's many churches in our era today that have a huge emphasis on the gifts, on manifestations. Again, I believe in these things, but they get to the point where they're out of line biblically to what we're supposed to be focused on. So be very careful with this. Now, uh, the next one. We talked about the preaching. Uh, the, the idea of messages that bring a conviction to our heart, a conviction of sin, that one's very important. Again, if you're in a church and you can listen to the messages every week and you leave there feeling like, oh man, I feel like a really good person. <laughs> you know, sometimes we need to know that, you know, we need to know God loves us, all these things. Don't get me wrong. I agree with that. And there's a time where we need to be healed up and, and, and God does wrap his arms around us and helps us heal up. But understand this, if we're not being challenged that our life needs Jesus and that we have a, have a dependence on him and we need to be looking at our own lives and realizing that we, that we have a real need for him to continue that transformation in our lives and, and there's, if there's no conviction about sin in our life, then you really need to analyze the church you're going to. So anyway, let's go to the next one. Oh, this one is a good one. This one is, is one that I have to honestly say uh, I struggled with because I struggle with, uh, I didn't used to struggle with because of the type of church I used to go to, and it was this a push for money. The Bible talks about money more than a lot of people think that it does. But the problem with that is that they often, if you're going to a church, that it feels like they're trying to pull the money out of your wallet all the time. Uh, and, and scripturally, even bringing up scriptures and, and making you feel condemned, where you maybe feel like you're being manipulated for your money, you probably are. And <laughs> so I want, you, want to just tell you this, that if there's a church that, that, that has a strong push for money, then you probably need to be very careful. Again, the emphasis in a church should be the first six things that I talked about not an emphasis on pushing for money. Now, here's another one that you need to be very careful of. It's very subtle, and you might not notice it first, but this is actually common with a lot of churches. Believe it or not, a lot of churches are in competition with one another, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. A sign of a healthy church is a, is a church that is, is trying to promote people, uh, uh, promote people, to promote the uh, the kingdom of God rather than promote their own individual church. Let me go a little bit deeper with that. If you go to a church that almost has, uh, feels like an elitist attitude, like we're the best church in town. In fact, I've heard some churches on the internet that have talked openly saying, you know, we're the best church in town. The runaway from those kind of churches, you know, very that, that, that elitist style of church, you know, I, I'm going to tell you that that is a uh, indication of a deeper problem. You know, uh, often you need to find a church that has a kingdom mindset. That, you know, we're, I know pastors in cities, uh, you know, myself, for example, I've been in a, the same city for so many years. I know a lot of pastors in the city and there's a lot of them that I prom would promote. And even though they might have a little couple differences in doctrine with me, you know, you see fruit in their lives and they're for the kingdom of God. And then yet there's there's others that don't want anything to do with any other churches. If somebody leaves their church, they they, they kind of ostracize them. I've seen this happen so many times. If if you're in a church that has that elitist attitude that they're the best church in town, then you know what? You need to seriously look at finding another place with a little bit more humility and a little bit more of a kingdom mindset. Um, so anyway. This leads me to the last one that I want to touch on today, and it is to do with the idea of servanthood. And uh, this is a very subtle one as well. As much as I agree that you know, all of us, and I mentioned earlier, we all have giftings, we have all, all have callings, and you want to be in a church where, where you can serve, as much as that is true, you need to be, uh, I, I want to warn you about one of the things that it often happens in church that you need to be aware of, and it's this. 
The idea of serving, if it's used as a hook to keep you in the church, then you need to be very careful. And you might say, well, what does that mean, Pastor Lyle? Well, I'm just going to tell you this. The, the key thing for us, as much as I mentioned the six things, in balance, if there is a strong emphasis on serving, on finding out your gifts, and all these things, uh, you might want to check into this, because I, I'm going to tell you, as much as we all, as I mentioned, God's given us giftings and callings, and we should serve, often what happens is, the DNA of a church is that if you're not serving in some capacity, then you're not fully functional and you need to be serving in the church in some capacity. Friend, your first priority before serving is, is sitting yourself under some teaching, uh, you know, submitting yourself to that, and, and cultivating a walk with Jesus. I've seen so many people that come to church and the first thing, and I was guilty of this years ago. I used to do the same thing. And that's why I know how important this is. Often, if you go to a church and the first thing they want to find out is, is what is your gifting and your calling? Do you play guitar? Do you do worship? Do you preach? You, you know, what's your ministry? Be careful because this could very well be that they want to get you involved because once you get involved, then you almost feel bad if you don't want to stay. And I want to show you how it worked in the early church. I don't know if you know this, but in Acts 6, there was over 5,000 people. There was at least 5,000 people in the church before they actually opened up for seven men that had integrity, that were full of the Holy Spirit. That had, that there was some requirements, as you're seeing here. There was some requirements for people to serve within the church before they served in particular ministries. Friend, before you go out, and, and this is important, before you get involved with uh, different gifts or different ministries within the church, before you commit to any of those, you need to know that the church has a balance of those six things that I mentioned earlier. Don't just get involved right away. Know what they believe. You know, know about, you know, uh, about the DNA of the, the spiritual... Uh, uh, spiritual community there. Know about praise and worship. Do you agree with the, the lyrics and the songs? You know, know, is there a place where you can be mentored through discipleship or Bible study? Know that they're actually reaching out to the community around them uh, with the gospel message. And yes, know that there's availability for you to serve. The last one, the serving part, really should only be done when you're, uh, you know, to a different degrees as you grow in Christ. There's many people that maybe you have a, a, a real strong ministry gift for something, you know, that, uh, that uh, you know, whether it's prophecy or, or something like that. But if you haven't been discipled properly, you shouldn't even be looking at, at using that gift until there's other things built in our lives. And let me put that another way. A new believer, not just a new believer, but especially a new believer uh, you need to make sure you've got somebody in your life that you can talk to, that can mentor you, that you know that you're accountable to in such a form as possibly a discipleship. Somebody that you can can learn from, and then as God develops you, then your gifting is going to make a way for you to be able to use it. But I see, I even heard a story even just today, somebody who would who'd been, uh, he'd been in ministry two years and all, or he'd been a, a Christian two years and he's going around, you know, making a mess with all of these giftings that he thinks he has. It makes, it can make an absolutely, um, uh, bring a reproach to the gospel to a degree, but it can also get you in the place where you can be very disillusioned because you're seeing that you might even, you might have a gift, but I'm going to tell you that if you don't, continually work on your walk with God and gain some maturity, then I've often seen where somebody's gift, uh, if, it, if it isn't, um, if, if you don't progress properly in the faith, that gift can be a real hindrance to you and cause a lot of damage. Uh, you know, I wasn't planning on talking about that necessarily today, but the idea of being a part of a local church is really important in you not only developing your gift, but developing your character so that your gift can function properly and do everything it was intended to do. Too many people, if they don't do the first six that I talked about here, 
you can find yourself on the outside and being angry at the local church, angry at people because they didn't see your gifting, didn't these kind of things. This is why there needs to be a balance of these things. So again, my last point about serving. Serve. There's all different types of serving. You know, some of them might seem like menial tasks. Start with those. Don't start with what you consider the biggest ones. No, submit yourself and just do some of the things that you know that Jesus would do. You know, the Bible says that, that uh, in Acts 10.38 that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. The key is he went about doing good. Before you look to go and, and, uh, and see all the, uh, see, go, go and change the world, start with the world around you. Start with some of the small things. Jesus went about doing good. And that's the way that any ministry should start. So as far as our serving, start by just doing good, doing the little things. And then God will open the doors for some of your these other things to, uh, to hopefully flourish in the future as you continue to walk some of this out. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. If you did, I just want to encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel. If you like the video, please uh, like and share it with anybody that you think that it will help. And also, if you do look to uh, contribute to Daily Renewal financially, please see, see the links below. Well, I really enjoyed our session of Daily Renewal today. But until next time, God bless you and have a great day.